Welcome to part four of the SIG 200 Basics series of videos. In this session, we will configure the SIG 200 logic editor to implement the distance tracking functionality using the PowerProx and the SLT configured in the last video. Here you can see that I've launched my browser. This happens to be Chrome and that is the one that I would recommend. And so I just had to punch in my IP address of my SIG right here in the address field. 192.168.0.11 is the address that I had configured. So I've made a connection. A few other things you can notice here. The connected devices. The SLT is connected to S1 here. The WTT4, as already discussed, connected to S2, right? These model numbers showing up here in, in the connected device fields are a result of a properly loaded IODD file. How to do that was discussed in the prior video, so please go back and review that if you don't remember how that's done. Definitely want to do that first thing. Okay, so moving on here, we can go to the identification page, take a look at the firmware version. This is 140. And there's some other identification information, serial number, part number, etc. More importantly for us, we want to move on over to the configuration screen where we should see on port S1 in SLT. And you should be getting a graphic looking like this. If you're not, then I would recommend trying to reload your IODD file and maybe uh, rebooting the SIG. Similarly, you should you should get a graphic looking like so for the WTT4, okay, on port two. And over here on the right, we have uh, all the all the different parameters of these devices that we can change. And first thing you want to do is make sure that you're logged in as maintenance. So select maintenance here and the M A I N is the original password and then you can do editing by choosing the pencil in the upper right over here. We're going to go ahead and drill into the parameters, go to the parameter menu for the WTT4 and then general settings and then just hit restore factory defaults for that sensor. Okay. Similarly on port S1 we're going to come in here and general settings and we're just going to hit restore factory settings for the SLT as well. So once you get everything set back to the factory defaults, what you want to do is come into port S2 for the WTT4, go to the parameter menu, detection specification, and then for each one of the switch points, you know, for the QNT1, QNT2, etc., etc., that currently have the default setting of single point mode. We're just going to deactivate all of those. Okay. Just go through and do that. And that is really the only changes that we're going to make to the settings inside the devices that are connected. Okay, so now we're going to get into the real meat of this project here and go to the logic editor section and let's go ahead and make sure that we're logged in maintenance again. M -A -I -N. You probably don't need to do that if you've already, if you're already logged in. Then click on the little pencil here to, to be able to edit with little logic blocks over here on the blank screen here. Blank except for these logic elements over here these are considered inputs and, and on the right hand side here you can see that there's a number of outputs so these correspond to our WTT4 on S2 over here we have uh, the corresponding outputs that are available for the stack light on S1 we want to go in here to the conditional blocks and pull out an integer comparator okay that's what we're going to be working with here today for the end for the distance input what you're going to get is you're going to take this guy right here all right and we're going to make a connection it's, a, it's an actually it's an integer value from the sensor plug that into 
the comparator, first input on the comparator. If it weren't an integer value, then it actually wouldn't work with the comparator because you can't plug in a boolean when you're comparing because you know it just doesn't make any sense. So then the other thing we need is we need a constant to compare against, and so that's what this is. Go ahead and plug him in there, and then configure the constant. And the first one I'm going to configure actually is going to be the last one, so I'm going to go this in reverse order. Let's go 500 for farthest out. If you remember that little video showing the light elements, this is going to be the red one out there at 500 millimeters. And so when the distance is is at 500, and actually what I'm going to do is is choose on the comparator the greater than or equal to uh, output. Okay, there's a number of different ones here that you can choose. Like this is uh, less than or equal to. This is less than. This is equal to. Greater than. We're going to go with greater than or equal to. When it's greater than or equal to 500, we want to turn on the last segment there, the last section, and so that's going to be tier 5. Okay, so actually let me reorder these if I can. Yes, thank you. Let me pull that one down, and then 2, and then 1. Nice. Alright, so now we need another comparator because we remember we got five different values to compare against, right? Five different segments we're going to turn on. So it's going to be the same uh, distance value. So we can actually just pull off of this guy again and feed in. And then we're going to move this uh, constant down here, make the connection there, and configure this guy for 400. Again, it's an integer value, so it doesn't take a decimal point. And then we're going to, of course, go with the less than or equal to output again over here for tier 4. And again, I'll just keep blowing through this stuff here. It's the same thing over and over. Sure you're getting the hang of this by now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the last one here. Could be another comparator. There. And then grab this guy. Constant. This one we're gonna to set to 100. And less than or equal to. So um, we're going to have to uh, transfer and execute the logic. Okay. So come up here to the right, transfer and execute. Okay. So after doing the transfer, all that data should be saved to the memory of the SIG. And even if you lost power now, then it should come back as as it was entered there. So. You shouldn't lose it. What we'd like to look at now is the final product. Let's see if this thing works. And so here you can see the WTT4 aimed at our box, and, and there's the stack light. And so it must be, since all the elements are off, must be closer than 100 millimeters. Let's go ahead and scoot that guy out a little bit. And got the first section coming on. And at 200 millimeters. 300 millimeters, there's 400, five, come back in. And they should all extinguish in sequence. So that's the basics. Nice little project to get started on. Hope it's working for you. And until next time.